How much milk can a carnival drink if a carnival could drink milk? Um, well, I don't think traditionally any humans actually drank milk up until probably around about 10,000 years ago. Prior to that, nope. And then there was adaptations that happened over time. And obviously those people back then would have had no leaky gut, no issues with that, and so they wouldn't have had a problem. Um, they just may have not had as good digestion, but at the same time there was, you know, you've, you've got the enzymes in there to digest in raw milk, and that's what they would have been consuming. And over time, the body adapted by increasing. It's a bit like amylase. You know, tribal people have very low levels of amylase. But as we became, you know, and that was sort of like a vestigial, like vestigial organs that are, remain. Well, we had adaptations from our earlier evolutionary history. So we had those sort of adaptations for amylase for the, the you know and so but then when you actually get into agricultural societies they have far more why because they get upregulated because the food supply changes so we've always had the ability to um to deal with milk from a young age it just got down regulated so rather than those genes being turned off they get they got left turned on that's all that happened epigenetic changes we always had the capacity to drink milk, um, you know, first from mummy and then 10,000 years ago from animals. So it's not an issue, never has been. Milk is not an issue for, for humans. Um, you know, even the Maasai drink about a, two cups of milk a day, sometimes three, and they still remain in ketosis. I mean, if you a couple of glasses of milk, you know, it's not a, not a lot of carbs. And if you're physically active, it's nothing. It's a blip, you know, so it's pretty much irrelevant. So I usually have a cup of raw milk a day, um, you know, so a glass, you know, would be about 250 to 300 mils. Um, so that's sort of just giving you an idea in terms of ounces. Give me a sec. So 250 is about eight, eight ounces, and 300 is between 8 and 10.6 10 10 ounces um, per day. So, you know, in each one of those is about 3.8 3 grams of carbs times 3. You're looking at about eleven point four grams. You're still in ketosis. So even if you, even if you had, two glasses of that, you'd still be twenty two point eight. Still in ketosis. That's quite deep ketosis. Usually, if you're below twenty five and below, you'd still be in ketosis up to fifty. You'd have four, you could have four big glasses of milk, and you'd still be in ketosis. So it's four or five if it's a standard cup, which is 250. So the reality is you can consume quite a bit of milk and really still be in ketosis. So it's a non-issue. Key thing is, is your gut permeability sorted with taurine and vitamin D? If it is, less of a problem. If it isn't, well, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Simple as that. So, and uh, you know, and if you take the lactobacillus type bacteria, so if you use the old Ruteri that Lukey down here put in the link, which is that one there, and you suppress a number of pathogenic bacteria, and then you put back some of the, by eating dairy products, you put back some of the lactobacillus type strains, what happens is you are able to better digest. I've got Chinese people back drinking milk with no problems who are lactose intolerant. It's bullshit, you know. You can restore it in most people in that regard. You know, some will tolerate raw milk better than, than others. It depends, you know, on the, their specific genetics and stuff like that or their specific problems, and usually it's a gut microbiome problem 
that can be resolved with some of these probiotics um, strategies combined with taurine usually sorts everything out and suppressing the sort of the nasties that can cause some derangements.